software engineers honestly have one of the most amazing lifestyles in America. And the fact that you don't need a degree to be able to change a life in tech is insane. When you look at the world, I'm in the Philippines right now, and I see people struggling in unimaginable ways. I see people at the airport who are so desperate to have money to take care of their family, who are so desperate just have to make enough money just to eat themselves, that they will go to the airport, and when they see a foreigner at the airport, they will do anything to try to convince you to buy that product. And it's so different when I look at the life that we have in America where kids, adults, young adults, you name it, are lazy as hell, to be honest. And I honestly think that is one of the reasons why so many aspiring engineers, aspiring software engineers, fail to make it in tech. I think that we we tend to forget how good we have it in America. We have it good. Now, we might not have the best life compared to everyone else in America, but compared to the rest of the world, yeah, we do. So many software engineers or aspiring people, aspiring software engineers can't even make it in tech. And I've first, and I've seen that firsthand. 90% of the people, if not more, that I meet with in my one-on-one mentorships, they give up. I think that a lot of people like the idea of being a software engineer. I think a lot of people like the idea of being able to make more than a doctor, than a nurse. These people who put in so many hours into into school, into to, to actually working in the field kind of like an intern before they can actually become a nurse, a doctor themselves. I think people like the idea of uh, the title of a software engineer, because if you're a software engineer, you tend to have a lot of options. Even in the midst of this recession, I know people who were laid off who got a new job in weeks, if not just a month or two at tops, and paying more than the last job, if not a little bit less, if not the same. But that only happens in tech, and I think people like the idea of hearing that. But when it comes to actually what it takes to get there, like people like the thought of the end goal, but when people think about what it takes to actually get to that position, when people think about what it actually takes to make it to the end goal to become a software engineer, when it when when it really when it comes to how much actual effort you need to put in to be an engineer and change your freaking life, once people get to that point, they give up. You see it on TikTok, you see it on Instagram, you see it on YouTube, on like people's channel like mine, where we have insane lifestyles. But I mean, people like the idea of that, but I don't think people really understand how much effort it takes. I mean, I, I've made a ton of videos of, of how you just use Google to learn how to code, right? And it's true. I've t- I made a ton of videos on how our lifestyle is amazing, but when it comes to the amount of sacrifice you got to put in to get that first job, the amount of discipline you need to learn and get that next job, when it comes to that, people want to give up. People don't want to put in the work. They want to just receive that insane increment off the bat. But yo, there's a reason to get, and I say this in every, literally, I think I say this in almost every single video. There's a reason that we get paid more than so many other people. There's a reason that we have such an amazing privilege to be able to work from home. To receive the pay that we receive. Like, yo, the thought of me flying to the Philippines three times in one year is insane. I'm in the Philippines right now, and this is the third time that I've been here this whole year. That's expensive. But I wouldn't have been able to have the lifestyle, be able to travel around the world, come to the Philippines three times in one year, Rent this nice ass condo I'm in, by the way. If I didn't have a developer salary, if I didn't have the ability to to work from home, to travel, okay, cool. <laughs> like that's that's freaking insane. That's the dream, right? I do have an amazing manager. I'm very fortunate. But how many people can say they can do that? 
I got here, not just overnight. Y'all have been following my journey in YouTube. If you watch my channel, my main channel, on how much my life has changed over the last six, seven years. It is crazy. Like, so many people would dream of having this op these opportunities. But, yo, there's a reason that I got to this situation. I didn't just chill the whole, the last six, seven years. I was learning to become the best developer possible at my job while doing YouTube, while creating content, trying to help y'all out. You know, a lot of people, a lot of my friends, and just people in general, they say things like, Chris, you need to learn how to chill. You work too hard. Like, and I understand it because of my friends. They need to say that, right? Because they care about me. But you know what I think about when I look at the situation I'm in today? Yeah, if I chill and I just relaxed years ago, I wouldn't be where I am today. If I just try to just enjoy life even more than ever, which is nothing wrong with that. But for me... If I just continue to just chill, enjoy life, and, and just be satisfied with where I'm at and not continue to try to elevate my life, elevate my uh, potential financially, I want to be happy. You know, y'all, y'all know I, I had a major depressive disorder. I had a bad episode years ago when I was at working at Entrepreneur. Uh, this is actually after I got laid off, or just before I got laid off, actually. I had Entrepreneur during the pandemic. And I was, since then, I was taking hella. Um, medicine for depression and had bad anxiety, really bad anxiety. I was taking um, some strong anxiety pills. Do you know why? Like when I really look back now, the moments when I had really bad depression and anxiety. I know well, number one, I was working working for a really bad boss. I made a video on the, working for the worst manager ever. But other than that, it was because I was that was when I was the least busy. That's when I was like satisfied and all right, this is enough. I'm just going to relax and chill and and, and 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 put my life on cruise control from here on out. That's when I was least happy. I'm most happy when I'm working really hard and have a purpose in something. Right there. I made a video on how. I made a video on how I make $42,000 a month. I made a video on that. You can check it out on my main channel. And literally the week after I published that. You know, I, I was going through all these different thoughts. I'm like, wow, I made more money almost. I mean, in one month, what I used to make in one year as a junior web developer. And I thought about this is the dream that people, so many people want. What's next? Should I just be satisfied and chill now? I make this much money every month. And then my depression started coming back. Anxiety started coming back. This is what I work for. This is it. I can buy whatever I want now, but... I don't feel any more happier than where I was six years ago. And so going through these different struggles, what I, what I learned about myself is that I am the most happy when I'm continuously busy, when I'm always working, when there's always something I need to work on next. And that's just me personally. That doesn't need to be everyone else. But I think that's just because I built that habit because Working hard and always working and trying to move on to the next level and trying to change my life and, and try to continue to move to the next level in my career and in just my life in general as a human being. I built that habit from day one, before day one, from ground zero, before ground zero, right? And I built that habit. And that's something that I, I, I just, that consumes me, just working, working, working. And if that's when I'm most happy and that's when I have no depression, I'm going to continue doing that. But listen, by living this lifestyle, by doing that, that is what brought me to where I am today. That is why I was able to get my first job as a developer. I'm I'm working a full-time job. I'm working a second part-time job as a tutor. I'm working at LAX part-time as well, delivering magazines throughout the airport while learning code because I needed to survive. I, you know, like for so many years, I, I was in like, I, I was in survival mode, survival mode, survival mode, trying to survive. And now I'm not in survival mode. Now I'm in living mode, living mode, living mode, or working. And you know what I mean? Like, it's not just trying to make it to the next day, not trying to make it to the next month, trying to make it to the next year. Now it's trying to secure a future for my family, right? But the thing is, yo, like, y'all, you, you won't get, you won't get there unless you're willing to put in that hard work. Like the reason that so many people fail. 
And I genuinely believe this. The reason that so many people fail when it comes to getting the tech industry is that, yo, they have short-term goals. They only look at what's in front of them. I want to get that first job, and I'm set. Really? You sure about that? What I'm trying to say is I never just look at that first step, right? When I looked at getting my first job, I looked at, okay, I need to get my first job so I can get that mid-level position. All right, I need to move to that mid-level position so I can move to a more senior position. All right, I need to reach this income level so my family can live this kind of life, live this comfortable. All right, cool. All right, I reached that level. Now I need to make sure I reach a whole other level financially so that my family never has to worry about money again. And that's when I'm most happy, right? So I do buy some nice things, right? Like I bought, I dropped like $6,000 on luggage, right? Now, the reason is because I travel a lot. Like literally out of the 12 months, I'm never, I'm not home for three months. Right. I travel almost uh, I travel every month, every couple of weeks and my luggage broke after a couple of months. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to buy really fancy crap. <laughs> and that's that's the nice fancy stuff about Remora luggage and Tumi luggage. Right. But other than that, right, other than the tech stuff, I need to grow my side hustle. All the money I make is really for taking care of my family. Now, I don't just give that money away. Right. Like like. I have my stepdad who I try to help out, but I don't want to just give my family money. I kind of make them work for it. Like I, you know, I'm traveling a lot. I don't have a lot of time to myself. I really don't. I, I wish I had more time to myself, but I had my, um, I paid my stepdad to move all of my gym equipment that was in my gym, in my home to my garage so that I can turn and convert my home gym inside my house into a home studio for more filming. Now, I'm not that I'm here in the Philippines, so I'm going to pay him again to paint that whole place, that whole studio gray, so I can use that for filming. Right? So, like, now that I have this excess of income, I give my people my family jobs. I don't want to just give them money, though. That's not me. I don't give anyone just money. I dreamed of this situation of being able to take care of my family like that. I don't give it away. I still want people to work for it, right? But, again, I got here because of the amount of effort and sacrifice I was willing to make. So what I'm trying to talk about y'all is that so many people do not make it in tech because they don't look at the oncoming goals. They, they, they have tunnel vision. Just that first job. No, no, no. You look at that first job, but you want that first job. So you can move on to the second one. Now, I think another reason that developers fail to make it in tech is because it's hard. It is really difficult learning how to coach, trying to get that first job, rejecting after rejection, after rejection. Even I still get rejections and I've been in tech for almost seven years now, but I'm used to, it. I'm like, all right, whatever. <laughs> I'll interview another job because I've had so many jobs in tech already. I know that's part of the game, but when you're trying to get that first job in tech, you're putting in this time to learn how to code. You're sacrificing times with your friends or your girlfriend, or your family to learn code because you really believe that that will later outweigh the benefits of just enjoying life right now. And I don't think people are willing to make that sacrifice because it is hard. But please understand everyone. Like, I know it's difficult, but the life you get to live, and, and you know, I, I hate it. And I've said this, and I'm guilty of this. I hate it when people say that money doesn't bring happiness. And it's true. Money doesn't bring happiness in a way. But at the same time, Money brings a lot of happiness. And let me give you an example. Okay, let me give you an example. A friend of mine. A friend of mine. Their, um, someone in their family died. They needed money to help um, do the funeral. I'm not going to say who this person is. But, like, imagine. They're struggling like crazy. The family is struggling. They don't make the most money. And they can't even afford the funeral so what do i do right they ask they need the help i give them the money and now i'm not saying this to brag at all and that's not the point of this what, <coughs> what i'm trying to say is that the fact that i have the ability to help people now which is what brings me the most happiness which is why i do youtube the fact that i have the ability to help people and it doesn't even feel like a burden to me is insane. Helping people is when I do feel the most happiest. I mean, that's why I love working. I'm busy because I'm helping people. That's my part of my job, part of what I do here at YouTube. 
But I wouldn't be able to do this kind of stuff and help people financially in that way if unless I had money. Another thing. Another thing. So my dogs get really sick. My small dog. Love it to death. My first dog. And I'll tell you this. If it wasn't for my small dog, I wouldn't be alive today. When I was fighting that depression years ago when I was working as an entrepreneur, I bought my small dog for a reason, but she is the reason that I'm alive today. She, I had, I needed a reason to to continue living. It was because of her. So uh, earlier this year, she was in a lot of pain, really sick. I took her to the vet maybe eight times in what, uh, two weeks, in, in, maybe three weeks. And in the three weeks, I spent about thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars, just trying to fight to help her live, fighting the sickness that she had. Yo, if this happened four years ago, five years ago, I wouldn't have been able to help her and she would have died. Right? I wouldn't want her to suffer in pain because I don't have the money to buy her the medicine to get her the surgery and the help she needs from a doctor. I would have let her die. Put her to sleep rather than her going through pain because I was not financially financially capable of taking care of her. Guess what? I am for more than financially capable of taking care of her. She survived. She got the help she needed. Brought her to the doctor. Yeah, three thousand, four thousand dollars—still a lot of money. It hurts either way, but I was able to take care of her, and she lived and she survived. Guess what? I'm happy as hell because of that. So what I'm trying to say is, like, these problems come up, and all the stress that other people would have when he's facing these problems, or when I needed to fix my teeth, when I need to get LASIK surgery, when I get need to get braces. These problems that would stress other people out doesn't stress me at all. And, you know, when people tell me, you know, money doesn't bring happiness, true. And there are people with a hell of a lot more money who are not happy at all. Okay. That's very true. But what I want to say is, yo, with, without this money, my life would be very difficult right now. Do you know how much joy that brings me to be able to take care of my mom and my stepdad? The reason I learned code, and I remember this when I was living in my car. All right, I need to do something in my life. I need to do something differently because if I don't do something different in my life, what if my parents struggle? And because I was lazy, because I just wanted to game all day and not change my life and take care of them in the future, they're going to be homeless because I was lazy as hell. Now they were struggling and I can help them financially like that easily. But imagine if I was not where I was today. If I didn't make the money I made today, they'd be struggling. Same thing with all the friends that I have. Yeah, money doesn't bring happiness, but damn, it makes life a hell of a lot easier. So what I'm trying to say is, for those who give up so easily when it, when it comes to learning how to code, don't give up so easily. Because the life that you can have when you reach a particular level in tech, and in income level in tech, compared to where you are now, your life will be so much easier. Yeah, you'll work a lot more hours. You have to work harder. There's a reason we make two hundred, three hundred thousand, four hundred thousand dollars a year. Yeah, we have to work harder to make a lot of money. Oh wow, we have to work harder, but that comes with it if you want to make that income. But now, because of how hard you worked and how hard you'll continue to work, your family, if they need the help, they can come to you. Your parents, if they're struggling. You can make sure they don't live in the streets. You want them to live, move with you. It's not the best having your parents live with you all the time, but you can do that. You have the ability. The fact that you have the option to take care of people is so freaking amazing. But it, it's and now I'm not saying coding is the only way to make a decent income. But if you are interested in coding, don't just stop there because it's difficult. Understand it's supposed to be difficult. That's why so many people don't make it to that level. But if you do, the fact that you have the ability to take care of the people that you love that you had the ability to change lives and help them, or if you were to have an inconvenience financially, it's not that big of an inconvenience anyway in the first place because of where you are in life. So many people give up on the tech, and it sucks when I see it. But if you are willing to push through and really make it to the very end, oh my God. Life-changing. Absolutely, absolutely Life changing. I don't know where I would be if it wasn't for tech. I'd probably make 50, 60K a year, struggling, not having the best health insurance. It would be very difficult to see my fiance, to travel, help my family. It would be very difficult. I, have to, I only worry about myself. I can't worry about anyone else. But now I don't even have to worry about myself. 
now I can just take care of the people that I need to take care of, right? I'm so thankful that I pushed through and never gave up. Why do so many people fail? It's difficult. They don't have discipline. And I think more than anything, people just tend to not have the help they didn't need. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next episode. Peace out.